Um, we've got um, this Friday coming, we've got the talk relay, which is um, to do with the Queen's Jubilee. It starts in Brandon, so I think that's another, you know, I'm quite proud that we've been picked to do the starting point. You know, it's going to be a bit of publicity for us along the way. Um, so if anybody would like to come, I believe it leaves at oh, nine o'clock from, from the Martin mm -hmm. Hills. Yeah, we need to be there before. So the, 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 the rickshaw, as it's called, um, is going to be leaving from about 9 a.m. So if anybody wanted to attend, 8 a.m. would be brilliant. Um, around that sort of time. Um, and then we've obviously got the Queen's Jubilee coming up. So we've got, and there is some bits gone in the local um, press in the last week or two, just to give a highlight of what's going on. So hopefully we'll see everybody in the town and hopefully all the councillors will come along and help and play. So that really finishes my report for the year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, item number four, to receive reports from the charities. Um, I believe they're all in the packs. So everybody read them. Everybody happy with them? Any questions, Jim? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chimney. I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Edmonton for her comprehensive report on the poor's on the poor's estate. Um, he's one of the unsung heroes, perhaps. That's work was done behind the, the scenes. And I'd also like to thank uh, Angela Bank, who's another perhaps another unsung hero who's worked hard behind the scenes and given us a comprehensive report. Mm -hmm. on the Lincoln Trust. And there's a considerable amount of work goes into running those trusts. And uh, I'll take my hat off to those two ladies. Um, I see I see we just had the uh, figures for the Brandon Football Club, so everything is all stacked up and uh, everybody's accountable. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No other questions, we'll move on to item number five. To discuss matters affecting the town of Brandon. And it's open to the public as well, if anybody would like to make any comments or any councillors. We'll make this easy. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I did uh, venture down to Abbeycroft Leisure, and we were given an invite. At any stage, we can go down there. Uh, after all, we did. Uh, and give, I gave them a grant of £3,000, I do believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went down there and uh, I think what's in place there is the, uh, uh, the, the Team Chill Out Scheme, if you remember rightly. Yeah. And uh, that's between 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock and they pay £1. And what I saw down there, I was quite pleased because uh, they had uh, a dozen teenagers mm -hmm. in the sports hall uh, they had full use of that massive sports hall um, and also the mugger, the mugger, the all-weather surface yeah. down there. And whether that's a value for money project, I'm not sure. It depends how, how long it runs for. But uh, we, uh, we probably didn't, we didn't, I don't think we asked that question when uh, Mr Warren came along. But at least uh, you can see where the money's being spent. So that leads me into my next question, if I may, Mr Chairman. Um, David Moore, Councillor Moore, I mean, when will we be able to go down to Wheating, uh, David, and see the, the track down there? I mean, we don't, we don't have 500 pounds uh, to, see, to see the track. Um, and in this year's, uh, in this year's pack, you did mention uh, a year ago that that is in hand, Councillor uh, Moore. So, well, I thought you'd done that already, Victor, because we were at the Brandon Festival, and you came and saw us at the Brandon Festival. You asked lots of questions at the Brandon Festival. You gave me answers at the Brandon Festival, and you saw exactly what we were about. Well, that's, that's fair comment, and I congratulate them for turning up at the Brandon Festival. But I just thought that there was a track in Wheaton somewhere because the one in Brandon was vandalised and some of this money was for that track. That's how I understood it. I mean, I stand to be correct. You, yeah, I mean, there is a track in Weeping. I mean, it's on the same side as where, where the Weeping Rally is held. And uh, we are there every year. And um, we, are, we are there on Saturday, on most Saturdays, on Saturday mornings. If you want to come down, you can come down. Yes, thanks for the invite, Councillor Mayor. Would this Saturday be, be okay, or would that be another Saturday? 
Sorry? Will this Saturday be fine? Not this Saturday because we um, we won't be much there this Saturday because we are the, well for the next uh, two, three Saturdays we are heavily engaged with um, uh, um, other bits and pieces but um, this Saturday definitely not. I mean the following Saturday might be possible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, I'll hand, I can't uh, remember exactly what we're doing, but uh, we are down there, you know, and uh, uh, the track is there, so if you want to come down and have a look, uh, come down and have a look. Thank you. Perhaps Councillor Caddy can give you a call with us. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll I'll th th thanks for the invite, Councillor. I might even come along as well. Yeah. And uh, finally, Mr Chair, if I may, uh, we have had some professional cleaning done in the town. Yes. And that was uh, financed by West Suffolk Council, and they have done quite a good job. Of, they've got yes. rid of the chewing gum, and they use quite a professional and powerful industrial cleaner. They've done the Market Hill. Um, I mean, Graham, have we have we thanked uh, have we thanked West Suffolk Council for that work? No, not yet. Could could we do that? Do you think? Uh, yeah. To yeah. say to say thank oh, you, it costs nothing, does it? We've got him on email. Mark, Mark Walsh is uh, yeah. head of operations. Yeah. I think that I think thank you would go would go miss. Yeah, no, I think they've done a lot more than they were meant to. Yeah. Although they didn't use. I think they worked harder than they were meant to as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they were meant to do all of it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and that completes my uh, issues. Okay, um, I think Councillor Farmer. Yes, uh, just one thing. Um, uh, a group that was helped out by this council early in the year, I'd like to report that the states. Uh, the brownies and the pubs, and they're up to full complement. There's in the region of about 20, 25 of each of them three groups fully taken up and it's fully up and running now after the three years of being run there. And that we've done through, in part, through help from this council plan, water, and a new company as well. Okay, anybody have any other comments? Yes, Please may I ask Councillor Cannon, as our Suffolk County Council representative, what he is doing about LTN. About? LTN. Which remind... is Low Traffic Neighbourhoods. Low Traffic Neighbourhoods. It is designed and can be implemented, as it is in other places in Suffolk, to stop the rat races. Right. Uh, that, those initials, that are good, I'm not familiar with the L, uh, LTN. Well, it's low traffic neighbourhood. Right, so just explain exactly what that, because that hasn't hit my desk, and that, it doesn't flash up on my computer, but just explain what. Basically, if you take Crown Street and Manor Road, if the London Road is blocked, how many cars turn into Crown Street trying to get to Church Road? Mm -hmm and you have queues and queues of traffic trying to short circuit the system. That's what these are designed for. Well, well we're all familiar with the queues in church roads, especially on a Friday night. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's what it's designed to stop. I'll look into it, uh, Councillor Brax. I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, I've got no information on that as I, as I speak. I've got no information. No, fair enough. Because people are entitled to go down uh, some piece of brooch or some piece of place and then turn in and say, oh, I'm trying to do that, you know. There is nothing, there's no... No, there's system. nothing legally wrong no. with it, but this is what this is set up this for. This is a scheme. To stop it. Yeah. And when did that kick off? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I fell upon it by accident. Okay, if you want to answer that, yeah. It, it have, they have implemented it in Ipswich, apparently. Uh, I can't remember exactly when they first started it. It was as a trial. I don't know the result of the trial. That's all I know. Okay, so basically you would like less traffic going into Church Road. That's the idea of it, isn't it? But where would you... Well, it's coming out of that, that was as well. It's a little crazy there. And nobody can get anywhere. They can't get into the... It can't be crossed. I mean, you can't get anywhere at certain times. Granted, uh, I'll take that on board, and, uh, but you know, we have the volume of traffic that comes in this town is is appalling. I'll look into that council. Uh, I've got to be honest, uh, I've done the rat race myself, so I'm 
I'm no. no innocent on this. Yeah, yeah. I've got to be honest. Yeah, just coming back on that. Yeah. Okay, Traffic management that came in in 2004. The railway at the Wheaton, I take it it's next to the standard gauge. Your railway? What do you mean standard gauge? Well, 4 foot 8 and the 4 foot 8. Is no, it over at Wheaton? Yeah. Is it your track? Is it next? Obviously, yes, it's standard gauge. It will just be near the flat years. Right. 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 Now, regarding the um, church road, there was discussion by this council several years ago about making Church Road one way and there was quite a heated discussion which way would you have the one way? Would you have it priority from Tesco traffic light <coughs> to the rep to the corner of the church or vice versa? Mm. But uh, you know it's, it's, it's a problem but the thing is if you do stop that traffic we haven't got any other road have we? when there's an accident in London Road. And that's what you have to think of. With Thetford Road, at least we do have Green Road. If there's a problem in Green Road, we have Thetford Road, and vice versa. But if we have a problem in that London Road, and we do something regarding Church Road, we haven't got no other means other than going back to Barton Mills and coming back to our Yeah. Yeah. So, then another thing, I know I said last month, and I do think this is a lot of money, £7,000, for this bus shelter in George Street. On the right cross of that, that we're going to fork out this money. It might not be our money, but it is somebody's money for this £7,000 for this so-called bus shelter. I said, or Graham said, that it would be too expensive to have a brick bus shelter. I cannot see it's going to be more than £7,000 to have a brick bus shelter. Now, lots of villages around here have decent bus shelter of brick. Asking why we can't, if we're going to fork out that type of money, why could we make inquiries how much somebody would it would cost to build a brick bus shelter? Have something looking nice. You know. Do you think a brick bus shelter looks nice? Uh, considering well, the we we'll get on it. You've got Wheaton, you've got Hotwell, Dean, 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 wasn't the one there that got knocked down? Yes, he was riding in the Crown That was to do with the bus. That was an accident as a bus. It was complaints. It wasn't rebuilt, was it? No. It was so the complaints about what went on. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm just sort of saying, I think it's rather a lot of money. And not to sort of take up too much. We just mentioned about Graham who remembered to play films and I just said to the chairman before this meeting, I was laughed at by the remembered to play people when they was discussing how to make money, etc. And I said about having uh, a nine hole pitch and putt, crazy golf thing, and they laughed about that. Golf balls right here, there and everywhere. But I don't know whether fellow councillors have been up to High Lodge but they've taken, the, taken it up and they have a, a crazy golf scheme going around trees, tree stunts about the same size as this hall. And people are queuing up to pay five pounds to hit the ball around these tree stunts. Now, Remembrance playing field should sort of think, we've got 35 acres up there and I'm sure some sort of small area could be arranged for them to make some money, like high lodges, um, to keep their books a bit more financial stable. So we have our representative in Dave Palmer, and perhaps Dave Palmer could mention what I just sort of said when it's the next meeting. Can you do that then? Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to do it on the west side. I'm going to do it on the west side. No, we can do it together. Okay. Is that everything, Councillor? Yes, we'll see what it says. Any other comments? Other than I think that you've done a marvellous job as chairman for this year. Thank you. And your vice chair as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for more. Um,
wasn't money for this bus shelter in the grant we got at the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. therefore, basically how, we, how I understand it, and I think this was discussed before, that money was allocated in this grant to spend on this bus shelter, so surely we can't change it. I think that, that is pretty much it, it's just because what it was allocated, it's, it's a, like I just said earlier, it's a living roof bus shelter, and that was what it was put forward under this planting scheme. So that's what we have to use it for. So it is for a normal bus shelter, yes, I would agree it's a lot of money. Just explain the, the living roof, uh, roof uh, system. I mean, who, who's going to go up and walk that and who's going to change it? Is it plants so there? Just explain that because I have no idea of it. Ali can correct me if I'm wrong, but see them. Yes. So it's long made and it's great for nature. I don't think they can get in the lawn now, do we? No. So that's just. <laughs> if, oh, I think, yeah, I think uh, uh, it would be a great, a great asset for the town. Yeah, yeah. really good. A lot of money granted, but. Yeah, it looked good, and it'll go in, in, in like, with all the planters and everything's going up around the town. It's really, really starting to make the town look good. Yeah, it will look. You'll have a better view of how the drone over the front, wouldn't it? To get a view of it. I mean, I don't know what sort of picture. Visibly, it's you, know, you had an aerial view or something. But anyway, we'll, we'll see. We can't, we can't stop. It's been ordered, so I personally look forward to seeing it. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I see we've had a couple of other members of the public. Have you got any comments? Or questions. questions you'd like to ask in this in the town meeting before we move into the normal meeting? Mm -hmm. No? Well, do you want to say anything? Come here. Oh, you're going to be the public forum. I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, sorry. No, we're in the town meeting, so you can make a It's not the public forum, it's not the main public forum of the main meeting, but it's just the, this is the annual town meeting sort of discussion. Yeah? You can still speak. You can speak if you want to. No, you can still speak. Any questions you have for the, for the about the town, really? I'm having difficulty at the event of times, but what you're saying now is reaching me in this hall. We can't be here on this Okay. You can speak now. If you want to make a comment now, you'll be fine, yeah. Uh, you're doing public forum, right? It, it's a, yeah, it's, it's okay. the town meeting part of the public forum, yes. What I uh, <coughs> want to say to you, I was hoping to news of me here tonight, but she was our treasurer, that uh, we have closed Brandon Neighbourhood Watch. Um, I gave your town clerk a report. But, uh, Derek, did I give you the, a copy of the last meeting or just what we wrote down? Just what you wrote down. Just what you wrote down. Okay, I've got a copy of our last meeting here. Um, what it boils down to is that we, there are so few of us now and uh, nobody wanted to come on the commission. People are uh, saying, when are you going to start it? And say, oh, well we need more committee members. Are you willing to... No. So it boiled down to uh, four committee members um, and June, as I say, was the treasurer. Now, most of our money came from grants from Brandon Town Council. So, uh, we have in our treasurer report £1,096 and no, £97.76, something like that, anyhow. Uh, and we decided at our meeting that we wanted to give this money back to Brandon Town Council to be used for the good of the, the town. Um, I have, I, uh, this is what I was hoping June was here, I have heard that she hasn't handed the money back yet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Uh, I believe she wants to know what we're going to use it for, but this is not in our remit. We are not interested in what you use it for, because we're quite sure that you use it for the good of the community. Mm. So, um, I don't know what to do about it. I think we'll have to have a little word. Perhaps, perhaps we'll get um, the town clerk to have a little word with you. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. I have given her the bank details already. Okay. 
Yeah. Another blow. But uh, as I say, we really decreed at our meeting that we wanted to hand the money back to you because we've had grants and what have you from you in the past. So um, as from the 4th of April, Brandon and um, Sam Brown and David Watch ceased to exist. Which basically means that anyone who has a neighborhood watch sign on their road could have it removed. The police are in their rights to remove it as there are no more watches. But um, when I spoke to somebody about it, they said, well, I doubt whether they're going to do that. So you may well keep all your watch signs if you're lucky. Okay, anybody want to ask any questions? Yeah, you'll have to shout loudly. I will, I will shout loudly. Please. It's just very decent of you to give it back. Can I come, come up here? I'm not convening any... You'll be no, 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 no. I just think it's very decent of you to give it back, the balance. This must be a first. Yes. Really? Yes. So I want to go down in history, please. I want to go down in history. No, not just me, but Brandon Abram Watch. The person who is giving the money back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's if you can part you from it. It's very sad that it's shut. It is, yes, yeah, that's what it's, it's the decent of the town council to give us the money in the first place. Um, so thank you. Yeah. I thank you actually for all your help. And Pete has done a lot for us in the past in getting grants and things. So we're very glad to thank him for that. But as I say, nobody came forward to be on the committee. So it just had to go. Because I, you probably all know Bob Jones, who was the leading light there, shall we say, died mm. two years ago. And we never really got off the ground since then. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Judy. And I'd like to say thanks very much for all the hard work you've been over the years for yes, as well, yes, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay? I'm sure that's probably echoed around the room. Absolutely. Yeah? Mm. Okay. Any other comments before we... Yeah? I took a phone call earlier today from a gentleman who apparently got my number from the council website mm -hmm. in relation to that he's moved to Brandon and that his child can't get a placement here at IES. I did say to the gentleman, contact the clerk or possibly come along to a council meeting because I can't advise you any more than that. It's not what's happened. Someone that would be a West Suffolk or Suffolk. Councillor Kennedy might. Are they under West Suffolk? Are they under the Suffolk yet? Suffolk, he was good. Oh, yes, there's a question. I think this might be the gentleman. Oh, yes. My name is Derek. I'm actually here from Brandon last Sunday. And my job is to visit my business and left. So we asked for the school for us to Brandon for high school. So the school said no space for us. So we said to us to make fun the College Academy. So he's probably 25 minutes from here. Yeah. So he's had a chance doing something cool because, because basically we buy this house because these high school blocks. My missus is the I have to drive and I take him to school today every day and now to Long Stratton. So take me 45 minutes one way. Basically we live in countryside, 12 to 12 years. Because I'm a farm manager on the chicken side. So it's big stress for him now because we promised him he'll have school close to home mm. and now he have to drive in public transport. So mm. Mm. he's had a chance to do something. I don't just going to do that. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult for me because my missus is on the drive, so she can't yeah. like, take him to school and I need to go work morning and come up. Like, so. Have they appealed? Uh, I think schooling is a county issue. Yeah. Um, so uh, if he gives the clerk the details. Um, so basically, we need to come up with two or three minutes for it. He is to spell out, huh? Sorry? He is to spell out. Yes, I don't know what No, Neil, you're close, right? Yeah, he is to spell out. Um, if he gives the details, your details to Graham, yeah. I will look into it because schooling is a county council issue. Okay, thank you so much. So basically you want your child yeah. to go to the school in Brandon. Yeah. Tick says to the three church, you don't go to school to Brandon. Okay. Right, thank you so much. Yeah? Thank you. Um, Victor, can you just ask if he's um, spoken to the family services coordinators 
because right. they were pushing me into, if you spoke to them about schools. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to add on this one. Can you ask what age is? 12. So 12. Yeah, sorry. Um, because you're, you're falling into... Can you speak up, please? Yeah. Yeah. Fall into catchment of four schools here. Um, I myself lived in Brandon when one of my sons couldn't get in there, um, and he was homeschooled until I could get him in. We had to go on a waiting list. At that point, it was an independent school, wasn't it? But I don't think it's now independent. Is it Breckland? It's gone back to county council. Yeah. So have you have you appealed? You need to appeal. You need to appeal straight away, urgently, um, and you need to really state the reasons why, because they have to listen. So. No, have you done it on computer? No. So how did you appear this place? Well, we've got to go to school. No, you need to go and you've got the website. Um, if, you, if you put apply for a school place, yeah. um, it will come up. I've done this recently from the grandchildren, so I know that's how you can do it. Um, it will come up with the local schools, and you need to apply via the website for a place at the school. That is your first point of call, rather than through the school, because they are the ones that allocate it. And if they say you're entitled, the school have to fit them in. So, perhaps if you meet one of the councils that are aware of it, they're going to be assisted. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, we well, think you can give your details to the town clerk and then we'll yeah. see what we can do. Yeah, I'm more than happy for Graham to give you my number. I'd say I've had what six children go through there and two grandchildren, so I don't know how it works. Okay. No, I do have a number there for them to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. I think we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll close the town meeting then. Okay, thank you. chair for the park next year right it's traditional after a year's service 
that the deputy oh, God, chair yeah. would take the chair for the following year. No. No. If, no. If, no. If, no. If, no. 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 There's nothing. Nothing. No, nothing in standard orders. It is traditional. <laughs> it happens at the West Suffolk, and it has always happened. I, 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 I can see so, where the coming from. So, in order to balance the books, if you like, I would propose you, but I'm, I'm not going to now, as you obviously don't want the job. Like that. Hang on. Customarily, the chairman have generally had a term of two years if they were re-elected. Rage was unique. He had three consecutive years because he wanted to see out the rebuilding of old school house. It's always otherwise been two, unless it's been hotly contested and one's been ditched, but it's customary to have two. I don't know. Apart from one bad four, 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 one bad if, you, if you're good enough to get re-elected, if you're a second year, and after that, it's been normal to stand down for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my experience of it is in deference to you. Yeah. I think you'll find West Suffolk do differ a lot yes. with town and parish councils, yes. Yes. I, I can see where both arguments are coming from, yeah. I know what you mean. Have you had a vote? No, we didn't vote. Those in favour. Those in favour. Those in favour. Those in favour. Could I just say that um, I, I would like to thank you for all your efforts um, uh, this uh, your la over your last term, and um, I congratulate you on wanting to take another term. <laughs> <laughs> Who said he wanted to? <laughs> well, I'm going to thank you for all, obviously, um, you know, voting me to be the chairman again. And I, you know, like I said earlier, I reiterate, I can't do it without all you guys to help me. That's the reality. It's, um, it's a big job. I can't do it without the help. So, right, thanks again for all the help you've given me in the last year. Okay. Okay. Item number two. Oh yeah. Right, so item number two, election of the vice chair and acceptance of office. Um, so do we have any nominations? The vice chair. Well, I'm gonna nominate Councillor Anina. I'll second. <laughs> Any other nominations for. Um... Are you willing to stand, Penny? Pardon? Are you willing to stand? Any other nominations for my chair? Penny's not standing. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to nominate you? No, 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 no. Okay, well, we'll move, you know, on. Yeah. Move to a vote then. Those in favour of council in here. Okay, unanimous. They need to come up here soon and sign some paper. Yeah, sorry. And swap chairs. Oh, I, can, I was going to say that I can, I can stay where I am if it's easier. I can stay where I am if it's easier.
including those air policing operations in Eastern Europe. The highlight for me for the year is, without a doubt, the uh, RAF Lake and Heath being recognised as the best installation for 2021 through the award of the Commanders in Chiefs Award for Installation Excellence. From an operational perspective, in addition to those air policing operations, we've done agile combat employment, if, if initial operating capability, capability back in August last year, uh, Afghanistan repatriation back in September, the stand-up of the 495th fighter squadron, the Valkyries, so that's the F-35 squadron in, in October, and the first aircraft arrival of the F-35s in December. We've had fighter squadrons deployed to our whole host of different European locations in response to the Ukraine crisis back in February, and that included the first operational deployment of those F-35s just 75 days after the first aircraft arrival. And then the fighter squadrons have conducted a whole load of training sorties and deployments throughout the year and hosted a variety of visiting squadrons, including you may recall the 336th fighter squadron from Seymour Johnson base, who were with us from November through until March this year. In terms of, in terms of sort of high profile visitors to the station, we've had the, uh, the Lord Lieutenant of Suffolk visitors back in September last year. We've had the High Sheriffs and Deputy Lord Lieutenants of Suffolk, Cambridgeshire and Norfolk all visited the station back in October. Uh, we've had the Commander of USAFE, the Four Star General and other senior USAFE officers visiting the station. And we've also had DECOM Ops, who's a three star Royal Air Force officer, come to the station over the last 12 months as well. From a community engagement perspective, the senior leadership team, uh, including myself as the RF commander and the 48 fighter wing commander, have attended a multitude of engagement events both in Suffolk and Norfolk and Cambridgeshire. 48 fighter wing personnel, I'm pleased to say, attended 22 local remembrance events back in uh, November 21. And we've had civic leaders and local community representatives attend a load of events, of events including the USVF autumn reception and the Yuletide and Thanksgiving Eve events at Lake and Heath as well. Currently in my inbox, uh, I'm doing a lot of engagement with local authorities to, to try and address the housing requirements and road safety risks that are generated from the station, working up plans for further community engagement events, most notably uh, in the next few weeks, the Suffolk Show, which I'll talk about in a second, and the Queen's Platinum Jubilee events. I'm working with the Army Commanders and the British American Committee to deliver those community engagement activities, focusing specifically on single airmen living in the dormitories. And then finally, we're, uh, we're currently preparing for the departure of our 48 Fighter Wing Commander, Colonel uh, Camaletti, and the arrival of the new One Star. For this last month, so through sort of April, May time, uh, you've seen a lot of activity on the station towards the back end of April as RAF Lake and Heath hosted exercise point blank. So that was aircraft from Lake and Heath, Mildenhall, the Royal Air Force, the French Air Force, Royal Netherlands Air Force, the Hellenic Air Force, Qatari Emory Air Force, all participating in a defensive counter air and personal recovery exercise over the North Sea. Lake and Heath hosted four Raphael aircraft and all their supporting personnel, and we also had two Greek Air Force officers uh, visiting the station during the exercise as well. There's going to be a, an increase on the station in terms of activity this week as well. There's a surge 
um, as our air crew conduct their routine uh, training sorties in the UK, in the UK to, to just um, uh, rebuild their competencies and currencies on the aircraft in the UK. From a community perspective, I spoke about the Suffolk show just a minute ago. We have got a large footprint here going to the military village at the Suffolk show this year from the 31st of May and 1st of June. And that includes the military working dogs, the special ops wing from over at Milton Hall, medical, fire, security forces, and the flying squadrons all going to be on the ground at the Suffolk show. Just recently, members of the, uh, the tri based community, so Feltwell, Milton Hall, and Lake and Heath, went over to Milton Hall Cricket Club and took part in a softball and cricket evening, which was great fun to watch. Brooks playing softball and Americans playing cricket was brilliant. <laughs> really uh, Just last week, I welcomed the National Fire Chiefs Council, their air transport group to Irish Lake and Heath on the 5th of May, and that was representatives from the fire authorities from around the country who have a dealing with, uh, with air transport. And they came to, to the station for a visit, but also for their quarterly conference as well. And just today, I hosted a visit uh, by the Mayor of Kings Lynn. <coughs> so the, the Mayor of Kings Lynn father actually was a, an air gunner on Sterling's and flew from Lake Heath during the Second World War. It was very much a personal visit for him today to come and see the station where he used to live. He only found, where he used to work, sorry, he only found out that his father flew those things from Lake Heath just in the last 12 months. It was nice to get him onto the station to get a feel for where his father worked. And then uh, finally for me tonight, we welcome the new RAF commander at RAF of Mildenhall. Uh, so Squadron Leader Andy Bell formally took over from Squadron Leader Al Barma on the 21st of April. Pending any questions, Chair, that's a good friend of the city. Thank you. You can head up. You see here. I think you're back to taking notes. Okay, Council more first. <laughs> Um, you said you had lots of activity. Well, I think most of us in this room are aware of the activity because that seems to start about 7.30 every morning. Now, why? You talked about sound the last time you was here and you was within the decibels. Well, when they are taking off at the moment, they have got to be above 104 decibels. If you've got a door open in a house, you've got to shut it because they're coming off and they're coming up over the town. And I've, I've had several people ask me why, and I've stood outside and watched, and most of them have still got reheat on. You can see the flame coming from the rear end of them. Now, why are they so loud to go up at that height they're going at? I mean, I think the noise is horrendous at times. I mean, I'm not against anything, you know, I ever up, but. They, they, are, they have made a tremendous amount of noise over the last uh, few weeks and it seemed to kick off about half past seven in the mornings and because the weather's got better, people open the doors, well, they're now shutting the doors again now because you just cannot hear yourself speak at times. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll address the early in the morning thing, first and foremost. So the uh, reason why you'll find that Lake Heath aircraft have to fly early in the morning is that they're competing for airspace over the North Sea. So there's a operational box over the North Sea where fast jet aircraft can go and do the training that they need to go and do. And they're competing for that space with UK aircraft. And UK aircraft get the priority of the times that they want it. So the, 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 the unpleasant times, if you like, the, uh, the, you know, the unsociable hours, uh, is, is that um, 07.30 in the morning slot that they have to take off to get in there. But they, they are within the flying regulations within the UK. It's just so happened that it's the US aircraft going off at that time because that's when their, their slots are available. With, if, with regards to the reheat over Brown, then I'll take that away. I'm going to have a look. Did you say it's been recent? Oh, it's been, it's been over the past few weeks. Okay. It's not, it's not a, the, the amount of aircraft that are going, it's the the noise coming from them on takeoff. When they come into land, you, you barely hear them. I mean, and they, they come in roughly the same rate. But when they take off, I mean, they're climbing so hard and so fast and so high, the, the, the noise coming from the, the back end of them is actually very, very loud. And I am sure it's over 104 decibels, which is supposed to be the, 
the um, uh, Reagan Yeah, so at 1,000 foot is where the decibel reading is taken, and that's the decibel readings that I gave you before. That's, the, that's where they, they hit. They're no different mm. the F-15s and the f It's not the amount, it's the noise that's coming off them, you know. Can I just check, is it when they are taking off when they're coming off from, if they're, if they're, if they're taking off from Lake and Ethan coming off, coming off the Brandon, yeah, and they're, they're, they're coming off all the Brandon, you know. Yeah, they come over Santon Down, they're just going through the cloud base, and they are, you can hear them. If they're going through the cloud base, and they're very quiet, that I know, they are, they're surprisingly noisy. I mean, you get two, three, and four at a time, and they're one after the other. You know, you've got to shut your doors because you can't hear yourself think. So, so I'm just, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is, is it, is it, because they've always done that? So no, it's only in the recent weeks they've done this. When they land, you don't, you don't hear nothing of them, you know, I mean, like that's when they're on the table. So you've not, so previously you've not experienced them taking that route? Not so okay. much as what they're doing now. No. Come further over. Um, Northwoods. Yeah, they're coming through the old brain for yeah. some reason. Or other. Okay. Well, I, I suspect it's because the wind has been prevailing from the east for yeah. quite yeah. a while, which yeah. is bringing them off this way. I mean, we understand that, we don't want to take a down them, but why have they got to be so high in the stratosphere before they even leave the max? I mean, do they have to climb that hard? So the lower they are, the noisier they will be. Well, yeah, so so what the more noise they make, Getting up there. So what they try and do is, is get up to a height to keep the impact on the town to as little as possible. But the with our business end of that is doing the, the, the noise and the heavy climb over the town. Yes. Now they should be at the upper height before they go to the town. But I'll, I'll take you away and check. Councillor Gang. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in the same vein, Squadron Leader, but I am just a messenger, so please don't shoot yes, the messenger. Right. You know, a resident from uh, Bracken Rise, which is uh, Bedford Road. On the w when when the planes take off west to east, he tells me that they veer over left-handed quite severely, and, and more so than, than they used to. Um, I told him, as a consequence, there is a war on, and as a consequence, um, there would be more more flying. Uh, that's what I told him. I mean, it's raining. It's raining. Uh, I can add to that, and I contacted him. Uh, squad and leader. Thank you. Um, no, I'll, what I'll, do, I'll take it away then. So it, it's a, do you say crack and rice? Crack and rice. Crack and rice. Crack and rice. So they're cutting, so they're, they're cut, cutting closer, closer they're, to the town. They're very yeah. all hard left when they come off. Yes, okay. Yeah. And is that, what, is that what is generating the additional noise? Yes. Yes. yes, it is. That's the main thrust, I think, of the complaints tonight. When they take off west to east, and in case of that, they've gone there because of prevailing wind or something, and get the lift there. You know, that's much better when they go uh, east to west. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you live in West Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I will then. Um, I will take that away. We'll leave that one with you. Yeah, please do. Um, yeah, I will take that away and go ask the question just to see if you see where the tracks are taking them. One more over here. How long has the base been there? Since 1960. Well, no, actually, the base has been there since the 40s. So it's been there a long time. Yeah. It's been there longer than people, and I'm quite welcome sound planes. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. I really do. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I'll take that back as well. Yeah. yeah. But I will check this. If, if, if there is a, a significant increase in noise, in, what, I, what, I, what I've taken away is a significant increase in additional noise over the past few weeks, with the aircraft cutting closer to the village, uh, closer to the town. That's what yeah. I'm okay. So I'll take that away, I'll go and have a look at it and see what the uh, see what's going on, and then I'll come back and we'll go to the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Anything else? Thank you. No, we're there. No, we've got one more. No, it's just not broken. It's all of the bird stuff. So the bird estate. Yeah, it's all the festival. It's all the festival. It's all the festival. It's all the festival. Not just uh, the broken. Everything that leads off of them, all the, all the estates either side. They but that we're them. used to the jets with the noise, just for the last few weeks, they've been more noisier. Okay. So there's it's a fancy morris just there. They must have closed their doors because they can't hear them, you know, hear the television or the episode speak. Has it been noticeable when, the, when it's been a low crowd base? 
No, no, it doesn't matter. No, no. You, can, you can still hear them through the claims, but often won't stand there. And if it's code base, you can't see them because they're above the claims. Yeah. But the numbers are still there. It's a fact right down to Manor Road because I've had to shut doors. I will, I will take that away and I will investigate the situation. I will come back and report next week. Next month. Next, next month. I'll come back next month and let me know the outcome of the, uh, the, the conversations. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number six to receive and confirm and sign the minutes. A Brown Town Council meeting held on Tuesday, the 12th of April 2022. I'll propose them. Second. Comment? Uh, Comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Brian, I don't, uh, I'm going to be brief, uh, but Brian, I don't enjoy the challenge in the minutes. Uh, but last month we did vote to document that awful incident caused by members of the public. Um, I can't make you uh, amend the minutes. Uh, but at least this afternoon, Graham, you did give me an assurance that there will not be a repeat of that bad behaviour. Yes. So on that basis, Graham, I consider the matter closed. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Okay. You've done the council thing, yeah? Council Ritual? Right. Number three. Yep. Uh, the says to receive the report from Squadron Leader. Yep. Uh, last bit. Council Ridgewell asked if the roadway could be made a clear way. Well, no, what I said was, as the road is a clear way, doesn't the grass verge also come under that status as a clear way? No. Meaning that the traffic cannot harm on the grass verge because if the road is a clear way, that also makes the grass verge. No, because the grass verge is beyond the, uh, beyond the road, isn't it? Yeah. Now, if you've got a double yellow line in the high street and a car parks on the pavement, that is still illegal because of the double yellow line. No. And that's the same no, principle. It's because, it's because he parked on the pavement. It's got nothing to do with the yellow line. I understood that no, it's no a traffic could park on the grass verge of a clear way. Anyway, that is what I said. Yeah, you've got to yeah. oh, if the roadway could be made clear, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? The road's already could be away. Councillor Van, there would still be no point in making it clear away because you cannot stop on the carriageway. As soon as you pull off, you're legal. And in fact, the very place we're talking about, the, the police put their camera vans there sometimes. Mm. On the corner there. Sitting on the verge. Yeah, yeah quite legal. Okay, please don't sit on the pathway as well, don't give yourself 12 points aside. Okay, right, we'll move for vote then. Those in favour of minutes? Yeah, you've got everybody in there? Yeah, I've just. Okay, against? Okay. 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 Okay.
and it was our contention was that um, they might, everyone might end up going to uh, Bury um, rather than um, work around uh, Brandon. I think Councillor Whitten wants to come back on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Really, uh, Councillor Ridgewell, this is a district council matter, not a town council mm -hmm. matter. It, you need to follow what was said, and it, what was said is that they are asking you to give your opinion. That's right. So you give it to them. There are no decisions yet made. Uh, the licensing committee has not sat yet on this subject. But I take on board, I am on the licensing committee, so I take on board what you say, but your arguments should be aimed at the district council, not the town council, because it's absolutely nothing to do with the town council. But you are districts. There's three districts over, obviously. Yeah, but then you could have, you could have rung me up and spoken to me yeah, prior to this evening. But this is a matter. It is under a matter of rising, the receiver of Paul, etc. etc. but that is taxes. I, I do believe I said this last time. You did. Mm -hmm. you know, I know it hasn't been set in stone, but before it is, you know, mm -hmm. it should sort of have the... Uh, Rest assured, sir, that yeah. I am taking it and your opinion forward. Right. Okay. Okay, right, we'll move on to item number eight, urgent business. Any item that the chairman considers a matter of urgent business? I don't think we've got any, as far as I know. I can't see Okay, all right, we'll move on. Item number, item number nine to receive a written report from the town clerk. So you've all received that. Um, so we'll move on again to item number uh, 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 Yes? Well, I know I'm a bit of a pain in the butt on this, but. <laughs> Yeah. On the last bit, the town clerk has put to accomplish the new Brandon Cemetery is progressing with the assistance of West Suffolk and other organisations. To accompany this, this additional workload, additional staff have been sourced and recruited. These new members of the team bring further talents and skills, further boosting the skill set in house. Did we have a lot of people apply? For the advert that was in the April's Brandon Life or March? We had four. You had four. And you took four on? No. Why would we take four on? No, you just put four things up. So I'm just assuming you took four. Well, yeah, you, you, asked asked how many, you asked me how many people that we that had applications yep. on. We had four applications. And how many did you take on out of the four? One. Just one. Yes. Just one. So now have we, we've got four, four time or? Where are you talking about? Brown star. Town keepers. Town keepers, yes. <coughs> we've, got, we've got an extra person there. And is that a full week? No. Part time? Yes. We you had a previous person, uh, 2020, um, that person wanted to do, he was full-time, he wanted to do part-time. You said he couldn't do the part-time. Now you've taken on something to do part-time. I didn't part -time. say, no, we're going back in history. I was it's not saying. history, I wouldn't think 2020 was history. 1066 is history. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you're trying to get into specifics, which um, I don't think need to be aired here. I just think that perhaps if we had four, I think we need a little bit more staff because this new cemetery will require a little bit. Yeah, but that's not coming on stream yet. When that happens, we will look at it again and we will reassess what we need. At the moment, that at the moment, moment a few years away. Really. Would you, you wouldn't countenance having someone on, uh, on staff now when the new cemetery is probably not going to be until spring next year so you could be paying someone wages for a whole year and we're talking about it constantly what we yeah. need all the time right. can i just ask there was the first one of the staff was going to be leaving did he leave or did he no stay? 
No, he stayed. He stayed. He's reduced his hours. And what we've done is we've used those hours. So we haven't increased staff anymore. What we've done is used those hours to get somebody else in. And what we've done is front end everything. So at the beginning of the week, we've got maximum number of hands on, on tap to get the work done. So that at the end of the week, we've got minimum amount of people there, but just, just, just to tie, just to get the, the, the finishing done, the polishing done of the jobs that we've started. Okay. So at the beginning, we've got maximum people off feet on the ground to get that work done. It tails, the work files tails off at the end of the week, um, so sort of Thursday, Friday, where we should have not so many people. We shouldn't need the many, that many people at the end of the week. Okay. It's all front end, which is where we need to be. You don't need to be leaving everything until Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday is your days when you should be preparing for the next week. Right. Yeah. Okay. You happy? Oh, finish. <laughs> okay, item number 10, the monthly um, public forum. So um, I'm going to propose we suspend standing orders for this. Can you one second it? Yeah, yeah, take two. Okay, we'll move to a vote for that. So those in favour. Come on. Please, please. Public forum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Those in favour of suspending standing orders for the public forum? Yeah. That's fairly... Yeah. Okay, so have we got any members of the public who would like to say anything? Can you hear me? Any members of the public who would like to say anything? District councillors, county councillors, I'm sure you've got something. You've got anything? Yeah. So if we'll, if we'll let the county councillor, district councillor, and then we'll go to you, yeah? Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm just going to report on that uh, forest fire which we had on the 28th of April, which was uh, quite a nasty one, actually. And we were in a planning meeting, and uh, we did notice all the commotion in the town. Um, it was uh, at the back of the brickworks on the 1065, uh, between the river and the railway line, and it uh, involved about 5,000 square metres, which is about the size of a football pitch, I've been told. Um, and they did have difficulty in uh, getting enough uh, engines down there with the water, but uh, I spoke with the fire chief, and they were fortunate that it didn't jump the river. If it had jumped the river, it would have got in that plantation between Brandon and Santan, which apparently is even worse, the access is even worse there. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm a bit concerned and I just wonder whether Brandon has been stress tested for fire. Um, and later on in the evening I see on agenda 33, uh, perhaps the lead person on safeguarding uh, might be able to help us on that. And the second issue, and I will be brief chairman, uh, a couple of West Ward issues. Uh, well, the West Ward is not, is not my ward, but I'm always willing to help. Uh, I've had a request to improve uh, wheelchair access at bus stop at St Peter's Approach and uh, I've put that in motion Chairman, I've put that in motion and uh, I've got the paperwork here um, I've got the paperwork and the, the, the job number Graham is C for Charlie, R for Ronald so CR yeah. 359 3.9 I'll leave you with the confirmation of that. So hopefully I can fund those improvements through my high-rise locality budget. And I've been down there on site and it really is inadequate would be a, a word I would use. Um, also, 10 Man Road, uh, West Ward again, uh, a street lamp has disappeared which used to be suspended from an upright. The upright ground is 151615. 151615. Five, five. Yeah, and to your relief, ground, it's a Suffolk County Council land post. <laughs> Thank you. And the job number, that's been uh, set in motion. I've got no idea of 
time, date, that the job number grab, if anybody wants to, if anybody rings you, is 360-029, and that concludes the county report, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Have you got any on district? Um, nothing on district. Um, only uh, to mention that the uh, local plan which is currently under development in uh, West Suffolk District Council, which covers Brandon, the whole of the West Suffolk area, covers stuff like infrastructure, housing, everything basically, um, goes through its next stage next week. Um, where it will be voted on that the current draft will then move forward. What that means is that it's then going to become available again for um, input by everybody. Um, and I suggest that you all make your feelings known when, when the um, stuff comes out that says, here, you can do it on this. Yes. Um, to stress it, what is currently in the document, and it's a vast document as it covers a lot of area and a lot of subjects, is not set in stone and won't be for some long time yet, probably 18 months I would have thought before it really starts getting locked in, doesn't it? So make, a, make, a, make your views known to it when, when the uh, stuff comes out. Um, that's about it. Okay. Uh, I just want to add to that, it's not to be handed to government in 2023 as a document. Um, right. Um, it's got to be handed to government by 2023. 2023, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the issue with us paying for streetlights in uh, Forest Street District Council, hopefully there will be some resolved at the end of this year. That's going to cabinet and that's going to be discussed further. But we are making progress, we'll be working on it. Okay. Oh. Councillor Moore? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, grass cutting going. Uh, we've had the grass cuttings round from Suffolk uh, in the last week. Uh, I would like to know why. Out of the front of Wellington Cruz, they never bother. There are daffodils been planted there, but the daffodils have now been dead for the last fortnight, three weeks. They totally ignored that area. It now looks like a tip. Now we had all this. We had all this last year. Um, I wonder if this can be looked into because. Everywhere else around the town where there's daffodils, they cut the grass round them. But they totally ignore that bit out the front. And that doesn't look very nice. And also, we have had no road cleaning, drain cleaning, or anything in Wellington Close for I can't remember the last I saw someone coming and clean. There's still the mud and the leaves and the rubbish left from the winter months. And this is, we're supposed to be trying to keep this town clean. Well, you know, that area is not looking good again. And, uh, you know, perhaps uh, uh, our council also, can we have this up? I've got a comment to make on that. Uh, yeah, thank you, yeah. Um, certainly take on what you say, but um, in the first instance, if you pick up the phone and speak to the West Suffolk District Council or go online, that will have much more, uh, as much effect as it will from up coming from us second hand. Um, with regard to the daffodils, if you cut them within two or three weeks, you're going to ruin the bulbs and you'll have nothing much next year. You really need to leave them five, six to eight weeks before you, you cut them down. Otherwise, you, you, you've wasted a whole lot of money on bulbs and, and planting. I know a lot of the lads that work at West Suffolk that cut the grass and that is what they're doing. If they're bold areas or plant areas, they are trying to avoid them. Mm. That, that's the only solution. Hopefully, that should be done. Hopefully. Fingers yeah. crossed. Okay. Any other comments? We'll resume the meeting. Okay, I'm number 11, correspondence, I don't know.
Okay. Item number 12, the accounts. To approve the payments for April 2022. I'm quite happy to close them. Um, oh. I have just got to know what sort of mop and bucket costs £97. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't £97. It's, the text box is only so big. You can only get so much information in there. There was a local, there was protective gloves in there. Um, it still was um, a reasonable amount, but it was an industrial one, and it's for the workshop down at the, um, the yard, um, and it's a proper industrial mop. So when they take everything out, they can give the thing a good, rather than this, you know, a sort of a squeegee mop, which has been great. Yeah. So we've got a proper industrial setup. So okay, thank you. Until it gets done. Yes, okay. The top one. Yeah. Bikes for high school. 3,200. Not only you get 500 off back with the BAT, but 3,200 for plants. It seems to be well, a lot of money. that. It's part of Brandon and Bloom's funds for their plants for the high street. That was what was left for the planting. Mm -hmm. For the money they were given from the grant. Okay, it's still yeah. a lot of money once again. <laughs> well, lot. they already had the money. It was, it was the money that was left, um, and they got the money for um, spring planting. Okay. Uh, I stand correct, but I think that included the plants, the soil, yeah. and the trees. Yeah. yeah, would that be correct? No, that's correct. This is for the next load of plants, not the ones we paid no, for. No, 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 no. The yeah. picture is correct. So, right. There is a few other bits, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's it's not just plants. And that's part of the welcome back. That was all their welcome back. Yes. That was the rest of their welcome back fund for their planting. So that's what that's for. Thank you, Jim. Okay. I still need a second for this as well. The account. Yeah. Any other questions on them? Okay. We'll move to vote. Those in favour of the accounts, grateful. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Number 13, um, to receive income and expenditure statement against the budget for March 2022. Just a note that one. Okay, item right, number 14, grant applications. Um, I'm going to, I've got an, don't think I've got, I'm a member of one of these groups, so I'm not going to take any time from the vote on this, if that's okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm a member of one of these groups, so I don't yeah. want to take any part in it, so, um, I'll read it out, but then when it comes to me, I'll not comment mm -hmm. okay. No, no. Okay, well, so... I, I, I've, I've contributed to one of these groups, but I would comment and I will vote because I don't have a peculiar interest in this. Oh, no, I just feel I don't want to. So, so. I, I will be voting. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, so it's a, a discussion to consider S137 groups <coughs> for Brandon Happy to Sing, Fledgling's Play Group, Brandon, and um, Brandon Festival. So, do you want to do them all together or individually? Yeah, singly. Singly? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll start with Brian and Happy to Sing, choir. So, um, we've all seen the application. I know Councillor Hughes is something to do this. I don't know if you want to say a few words. Yes, I'm, I'm on the Happy to Sing and it really is, it's brilliant. It's helping a lot of people that come along. And uh, we're now trying to start up this question. We're now starting to this new group that we've got have been working hard for the last few weeks and uh, we're ready to go. But okay. we need the funding, if you don't mind. Any questions for Council? Keep on this. It seems a lot of money for a start-up. Um, how many members do you have, June? At the moment, we're still in Stort Jill. How many? We had last week. Um, we meet every two weeks now. And this is the third iteration. We started just a very small number and then it went there was about new piece of about 10 of us but the first week we met there were 12 and last week there were 20 of all ages so abilities um you know and uh, it's working very well in fact so uh, and there are other people who are interested in joining it so yeah it is beneficial it has i'm not doubting the benefit so yeah but having had some experience of something like this I, i'm just concerned that the amount of money that's being <coughs> The person to lead it. Um, that was all I was just. Well, she provides everything for us. I mean, she's even written us a song, as yes. well as such leading us and providing the materials for us to sing. She provides everything. 
She's providing all the songs all printed out. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as we've said there, um, once we start getting membership money in, then you know, we may be a bit better off for another. Well, members have started to pay for some money for some slots now. Um, but mm-hmm. people get some free time, obviously, they get the taster session, etc. Because nobody knows what they're going to think about it. Um, so there will be subs coming in. And, and once we get up and running, so we've only really been in this format, we've only been going mm-hmm. up a couple of months, then there, there is a plan to do some fundraising and also free events. So, like, you know, it'll be say for the um, Brandon Park and other places. And we have had, um, I think, Margaret um, was uh, involved with talking to somebody about providing some uh, free entertainment as well. So, the, the idea is, is that it will grow, and it has grown exponentially so far. And Diane is by far and away the best in, yeah. instructor and leader that we've had in terms of what we wanted and, and the vision. She is, she's a much better person for us than we first had when we first started. Um, we went back, if you remember, we were singing in the park. That was how it all began, the thoughts. Obviously because of Covid, like everything else, we've been held back. But now we're trying to pick it up and there are a lot of people that are interested and so we're hoping we're going to grow. So I think it's a worthwhile... Yeah. Um, can I Yep. This hasn't just come from nowhere. Um, we have been holding, as part of the creative forum, we held introductory workshops up in the country park to start to build that from last July. So it's not just a snap decision that's been made. It's been worked out. We've had the creative forum to support us. Oh, yes. In, in the initial <laughs> stages, funding was. Yeah, well, we just need Okay, Councillor Kenny has a few questions. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's a few issues on this one, personally, for me. One, I still haven't got a bank account. I can make up that. Still haven't got a secretary. Yes, we have. There is a secretary. There is a constitution in place. Yeah, as well. The paperwork we have in front of us. Well, that's because it's only been, it's been written, but it can be provided. There so is, that is all available. So you have a secretary. We have a person who does secretary and treasurer, and we have a constitution and a committee, and we also have a bank account. Okay, well, we haven't got these details in our pack. Well, because it was done last week, we were waiting for the bank account details to come in. Okay, well, I haven't passed uh, an awful lot of money. Uh, it seems to me we're a council of finance and a, a start up scheme. You know, we normally. We normally contribute when things are up and running. Um, I was under the impression that actually the materials have been sent to the town park by the paper. And I talked to Jill about that because we just, as before, we paid £300 out of portion over this last month because they were waiting to know. So we take that. And I thought that they would have down to 500. I think it was 800 they asked for first. Mm-hmm. So that, that can be reduced because we've paid the bill. Okay, so you're open to negotiations, Jill? No more. <laughs> <laughs> open more money. I mean, me personally, £400 sounds like a better sum. I mean, is it nego- £800 yes. for me sounds like an awful lot of money? Yes, but when you get insurance into that, which has been paid. And tomorrow I'm, I'm going on a meeting um, with some volunteers for training for youth having youngsters in there and everything else. That we will pay for, that's paid for for my pocket. Yes, I was just there. Uh... Victor just said 400 is some. What about if we granted the 800 with some sort of loan free payment back? But like they pay half of it back with their, with their fees later like day, that helps them out. I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Are you not allowed to do that? No. No? no. Why not? No. Well, they said we'll give the money back early. I thought we'd have to do that. 
So, but I want that you allow money back from Labour, but what's, how's that any different? So we give them the full money and they give it back. Because if, if, if we give money to a group, if that money hasn't been spent, it must be given back. Yeah? Right. Yeah. So if they raise it, then they donate it back. Unofficially. There, there, there was an awful lot of thought and uh, asking the question, do we need the prize before we even started to put it together? And of course, one or two groups have faded during lockdown. This is something that brings health and well-being to people. I know Julian's already spoken to you about the neighbourhood watch and I know that you're going to have to have the money back, are you not? Well, there's about 2,000 in there. So if you're going to get 2,000 from the neighbourhood watch, I think it's something like that. But there's a fair amount of money in there. If you're getting that back, can that not be thought of? We can't, you can't take anchor account at the moment. Just no, okay. yeah. But no, I mean, yeah, we can't say that. Okay. We haven't got it. Can I just say that this is why it's in Brandon and there are a significant, well, in fact, I think all the members are Brandon people. And there's a vast age range, even without the young people. And it places for a lot of people who would be isolated in other ways. And the social benefits far outweigh any cost. And if we're talking about social prescribing and those sorts of things, which is the way things are going, then this is an ideal opportunity. Yeah, sorry. It just seems to me that we're being asked to help set up financially somebody else's hobby. It's not a hobby. No, it's allowed to finish. You can't buy a chair. You should probably a chair, and that's a public thing. You can't buy a chair like this. You have to go through the chair. Look, can any more comments come to us? Um, uh, yes, we do. Uh, once these things, we we I've personally given to the uh, uh, football club in in the town for for various things. Once they're established, but. For the setup, I'm, I'm quite reluctant because these things can be quite flash in the pan. Um, <coughs> I don't think I'm the only one who uh, considers the £800 a bit expensive. Um, I'm going to make a proposal. I'm looking for a seconder. If I can't get the proposal, then if I can't get a seconder, then the proposal will fall. So I propose an amendment. But we pay the same company £500 instead of £800. So I seek a second at around the table. I'll second. Louise will second. We'll put that to a vote. I'll make a second proposal. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we've got a proposal for the full 800 and a proposal for 500. Well, we've got to vote on the first proposal first. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, hang on, if you vote on the first proposal first, it falls and finished. Yes. Yes. I mean, be careful there. I mean, if the sensible way to do it would be for David to be the proposal to pay for the full 800 and then to do an amendment to it. But you please yourself, Andy. Can I just well, say before Victor's amendment that they did, had said, that having done what they've recently done, they have said they could reduce that amount anyway to 500. So they will really put that proposal forward themselves, really, yeah. Yeah. before a council yeah. has. Yeah. I, I presume this is for all abilities as yes. well. All ages, all abilities. Right, so we're going to vote on the 500 pounds. Yes, so those in favour of the 500. Okay, those against. Any abstentions? I didn't vote. No, I can't vote. Oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so that's passed. So 500 pounds, is that good? Yeah? Okay. Okay, we'll move on to the next grant, which is fledgling preschool grant. So I look like we've got a couple of representatives. Do you want to make your comments first and then we'll discuss from there? Um, yes, please feel free. Okay. Uh, I'd like to consider the application. Come down a bit for what you want. I'd like you to consider the application that I've already submitted. Uh, it's for a third of the cost of new flooring at Fledgling Preschool. We are a registered charity, we're a not for profit. Um, the flooring that we have at the moment is carpet, uh, and we've had it ever since we've been there. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of the children are toilet training, and when they have accidents on the toilet, um, Scrubbing the carpet is very hard, so we would like um, not laminate flooring, but um, flooring um, that we can more e easy clean. It is, yes, yeah, so much easier, which would help with lots and lots of things because they obviously eat on there as well. So if they're eating food and it's in the carpet, it's rolling. <laughs> Just imagine how they clean it all up. Uh, it's also more hygienic as well. Uh, the total cost is just over £7,000, uh, but we would like you to consider um, contributing towards a third, if that would be possible. Uh, I think I've submitted all the documentation. Um, yes. Can I just ask you, your grant has asked for £2,082. You said that the total cost of the project was six thousand eight hundred and twenty-four pounds. Is yes. that still correct? Yes, that yes. is. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <coughs> Can I just ask? I mean, it seems presumably you're talking about vinyl flooring. It's it's, it's it's not just vinyl flooring. It's a specific school flooring that is very very hard wearing. Where of it's not like. Um, in your home, if you have vinyl flooring, there's only you and your household, where uh, this is hard wearing that would last for years and years and years. As you can imagine, there's lots and lots of children and staff that are walking over it. It's a bit like buying a cheap toy or an expensive toy, you know, so that's... How big is this in Marmolean? Sorry? Is it Marmolean? Stuff they use in hospitals. Yes, very similar to that. Sorry. Right, it's, it, it is for doing one big room, a club room, a smaller room, and the toilet area. At the moment, we don't actually have any flooring down in the toilet area because the drain um, actually backed up. So we had to pull everything up. So at the moment, we don't, we've just got concrete down, which is not ideal. Okay, thank you. Councillor Whitman had his hand up as well, I believe. Yeah, well, I would propose that we give him the £2,082. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll second that. These people have got Yeah, I think Councillor Kenny, you can have a question. Uh, these people, to be commended, we know the history about fledglings. They were first kicked out of the community room and then they did a push down there. And they've now found the ideal place and they're prepared to put some investment in there with the assistance of uh, the council. Um, uh, my locality fund from Suffolk County Council of £2,000 has gone towards that. There's £2,000 being contributed from uh, Councillor Whitman's locality fund, my locality fund, and David Palmer's locality fund. And the other third, which this lady has come up to ask tonight. Um, it's an investment in the school. It's an investment in our future. You have to invest in the children. And um, the, the, I think the lady is, the work she's done over the last five or six years is to be commended. And uh, if Councillor Whitton is proposing we pay them the lot, I will second that. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, Councillor Palmer has a comment. Well, I'd just, I just like to know uh, what other grants have been awarded for this already, uh, in total. I think, um, Councillor, we can't get the dance. Well, he did answer, but it didn't add up. Right. Well, it did virtually. I haven't gone down the yeah. second well, three, three, lots, three lots of 2006, though, isn't it? Right, and you're asking for what tonight? 
Another 2,000? No. That's, that's 8,000? Mm. No, yeah. no, no. They're, they're asking for, for 6,700. So, and 6, we've, we've given them 2,003 two separate uh, bodies. Yeah. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. 2,000 yes. in total. Oh, well, two thousand. You've given them 2,000 from Suffolk, and then you've given them an yeah. equal share yeah. from the yeah. other mechanic budget from West yes. Suffolk. Is that right? Yeah. 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 That's clear. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's absolutely yeah. correct. She's asking yeah. for roughly a third of yeah. yeah. 58 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Well, he can't have no car for fingers and toilets. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Well, we'll move to voters. There's no other proposals. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those yeah. in favour of giving the money to West Suffolk, please raise your hands. Okay, I think, is that everybody? Yeah. Thank you. I've got a set of pictures when it's done. Thank you, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> the last one application is the Lee Brown Festival. So, I assume Sue would like to say something about that. Um, you, you want to come and say something before we talk about it? Do you want to call it out on? Last year, um, when we ran the festival, we had lots of contributors and entertainers that were so pleased to be able to perform that they were um, willing to do a lot of that for free. This year it's not quite the case, so we're having to pay people <coughs> now to, for the entertainment, etc. Um, so, also, um, one of the performers that we used on a more um, kind of casual basis is now a member of equity. So we actually, it's not only do we um, have to pay up the performers, we have to pay them the going rate because they're members of equity also. So prices are going up and we've also got banned as well uh, than this year's festival. We do a lot of fundraising elsewhere um, and that's on an ongoing basis. Um, and you will see that we carried over um, probably half the cost of the festival going into this year. Again, that was because we didn't have to pay the performers, so we can have a little bit of money in the bank. Um, and as I say, our fundraising is ongoing, but we need a contribution um, of a thousand pounds for from the town council. And that is to cover mostly the things that we have to pay out before we can even put the fest before the festival can go ahead. Things like their public liability insurance and license from West Suffolk Council, and we have to have first aid and marshalling as well. Um, I've also added on the local band um, that we're going to pay about two hundred and fifty pounds to. So. We will still continue to fundraise, but most of that will have to go into the, um, the fund for next year because we'd like to be um, at a continuing event. We have two councillors that are on our committee um, and everybody is very committed to put on um, this event. It is a free event as well because we hold it on the playing field. Um, we can't charge an entrance fee like a lot of the other events that do go on um, that the council helps fund. This we can't ask any um, entrance fee at all. And we have a number of local businesses who actually support us by providing some portable toilets for playing the field, a skip for all the rubbish. We have another transport company that provides the trailer for the stage. Um, we have um, a DJ that also helps, along with Dave Palmer, to sort out all their electrical power issues. Um, so it's kind of like, it's very much a Brandon Town event for Brandon Town. That's me. <laughs> and why, why can't you charge for the festival? Generally, the festivals do charge. The playing field is, is free for anybody to um, make use of. It's less it's, 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 it's 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 random. Part of the contribution then, you can't call it off. It's for a charity use. Keep correct. Councillor Moore. I'm just looking at the, the, the cost down here. I mean, as the dear lady has said, most people, uh, DJ, 
the stage and bits and pieces and have all offered their services free, yet the Lord of the Bain wants to... Oh, no, 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 sorry, we, we pay the DJ because he is it's our MC, he makes sure the program runs all the way through the day, he does announcements, he, he works, we, we do pay him, but he does over and above what we pay him for. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking, a lot, a lot of the people you say that provide yeah. stuff get the the local bank wants to and well, they've got they've got expenses to pay, they've got a lot of equipment, they have to get it to us, they've got it, I think and running a band has got a lot of hidden costs. I I can tell you all about that. Oh okay. You probably tell me more than what? No, but but if it's a local band, I just wonder why it was so expensive. Well, that was because, because, because it was special. Um, we would be expecting to pay that out anyway, wherever they, I mean, oh, we had a number of um, suggestions for bands, unfortunately some of them were already booked, um, we found no much one that wasn't, but we always expected to pay a band, not quite that much. <laughs> That's what well, could I propose we pay this? I mean, those start-up costs for this year seem... So Quite a lot of money, so I suppose we pay it. No, I'm just a, you say we can't charge, but yet the football club charges, everything else gets charged down, down the, the, the sports field. I mean, apparently the mug was given for free, apparently, but it gets charged because it's charity. And I don't know, and there's a few others. But, but everything else gets charged, so why can't we charge at the festival? Yeah, but we can't charge for somebody to come and set foot on the playing field. We can't. No, but you can use charge to, you, you could cordon it off with Paris Benton, like most festivals, well, and then charge entrance. Don't you that's right cost. to ask that, but we're not allowed, are we? Second yeah, David Palmer, I'm saying, let's hear what you can do. Yeah, yeah. have chosen to make that uh, field available free of charge. And then the end of the stand, nobody will be charged yet. Yeah. But then they get charged football? That's uh, slightly different because there's a lot of maintenance involved in, in, in the football and a lot of money spent. But the same thing after the festival, there's a, there's a chart, you know, there's a lot to do. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just yeah. trying to get out of here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And let's just have a closer look at these figures. Um, because they are a bit puzzling, I must admit. Um, the total amount needed is two and a half thousand pounds. The amount carried forward from last year is fifteen hundred pounds. So they're asking us to stump up the whole of the balance, which is a thousand pounds. I'm glad these figures, uh, figures are simple to understand. Yet yeah, they tell us they have sponsors, eleven sponsors. Do I need to go through them? Yeah, I will go through them. Lignesong, Molyneux, Over, Homes, Tesco, Shilton's, Manchester, Mr. G's. Star Transport, Travis Burden, the rest of the county. So, how much money, madam, are all these other sponsors contributing? Because the balance, you're expecting us to pay the whole some balance. Of, some of the contributors on that list, we've spent their money, and some we've carried over. There are some, some grant funding that we get has to be spent in that year. So we spend that first. If we're allowed to carry over, we will carry over. But part of that, um, the reason we didn't spend as much last year is because restrictions didn't um, weren't uh, lifted until the 21st of July, and our event was in August. We had about three weeks to cobble together the final arrangements because we really didn't know until the 21st of July whether we would be allowed for the event to go up or ahead. And lots of people were happy to give their services for free, which means the balance that we had in the bank didn't have to be spent. And the balance in the bank, we didn't have to forward pay any deposits yeah. like we did the previous yeah. year. So we were carrying a higher balance this year we will have to pay deposits the, to hold entertainers for next year because unlike last year, entertainers are in very high demand and we need to book them very early. So it's actually a managing situation. The other thing is our year end is the end of October. 
So if we waited until the new funds become available in, in April, we would be struggling to actually put on an event if we didn't know how much we had. We have to have money available from the 1st of November to actually set up the event and to commit to the entertainers. Could you give me any idea of how much these other companies will be contributing? Just a rough idea, because either the sponsors... They won't be contributing. They will be contributing very little this year. We are holding their money in the back, some of their money in the back. So you made it quite clear that you had an underspend of £1,500 last year. No, we didn't have an underspend. Well, you got £1,500 carried forward. We didn't have an underspend. We didn't even know whether we were going to back there and put on an event last year. Mm. We had, we, had to commit, we had money to pay entertainers that we thought we would have to pay. Some of them were very good and we didn't have to pay them. Some people half their fee. Yeah, the, the, figures, the figures don't lie, uh, Chairman, uh, Mr Chairman. The, figures are, the total cost of the festival is £2,500. They've got £1,500 carried forward. They're asking for £1,000 and all of that money is going to come from Brown Town Council. I haven't seen any contrib contributions from the sponsors. Um, Sorry, I've, I've already got several contributions that I haven't collected yet that I have commitments for. Yeah. But that will be paying for next year. I think Councillor oh, I'll just give away to Councillor. No, I think Councillor Whitman will go first, and then we'll let Councillor Brown finish on his proposal. I am slightly confused here, sir, because from where you're talking, you're talking about last year's event and then needing this money for November for next year's event. No, 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 that will be November this year for next year's event. Yeah, but why are we paying for that? We're not. Uh, this, the money I'm asking for is for this year's event. Oh, right. Well, you, you were confusing me completely. Well, no, I, I, was just very, I was just very open right. in saying I am still fundraising no, 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 no. also for next year. Well, yeah, perhaps you should the be... Word, the fundraising never stops. Okay. Fundraising for this year, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm a bit with uh, Councillor Lukanewicz here. We're not seeing how much, whether in kind or cash, that these other sponsors are putting up. So it does look. Sure, there's another page that tells you grants and contributions. So it does look as if we are paying for this year's event along with what you had carried over from last year. Yeah, um, that's right. I, I, I can only say from my experience of this festival in recent years is... It's only been two. It's only been two. It's only been two. Yes, in recent years, the last two. No, it's been two in four years. Yes, yeah, in, in, <laughs> so two, two in, in the yeah. festivals have been particularly poor value for money from the point of view of the council. I Last remember... Year we only had £525. I, I, I remember we were asked to give over a thousand pounds for roller skating. That's right, and the roller skating has been filled up with water before we even started. Well... Because it rained. Yeah. It should rain in the morning. And we're not, I'm not asking for money. For the first event, I'm asking so, the money okay. for this event. Right. What, what I would say is that I think a thousand pounds is a bit extreme, but I would be quite happy to go with five hundred. Well, that would so be very insurance. Councillor Brown, can I have a proposal first, and then we'll finish this first, and then we'll count. Right. I've got a proposal for paying a thousand. I've got a second. That was before those two. Well, then you got interrupted. Well, no, discussed. Well, yeah, but you. Can. Yeah, you already have a proposal. You can't have a pretty determined vote just because you proposed it. And it's, been second, and it's been seconded. Yeah, because it has been so proposed you... and seconded, it is then open to the floor to which, discuss, which, you which is done. what has happened. Which, is what which doesn't mean to say that you immediately get your way. So you've got a proposal and a second one. 
If you wish to alter the proposal, that's it, an it's amendment. an amendment. So, yes, that's what I am proposing. That isn't what you said. Right, 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 so, so, right so, we're, so we've got that. So you are putting an amendment forward, are you? Exactly. Yes, but it would be 500, not 1,000. Okay. I'll second, Chairman. So we're going to vote on the amendment first. Can I just say, Sam, I said to Sue, maybe she'd like to sit down because it's rather uncomfortable for her. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll vote on the amendment first, and then if that, then we'll move on, I'll we'll decide what we're going to do. Okay? If the amendment is to follow the amendment. Yeah, what the amendment is. Okay? So we'll vote. I'll say, well, I'm not voting, but um, so those in favour of the amendment? Those against the amendment? Any abstentions? Which is going to be huge. And cancer. So three abstentions. Okay, so that means we'll revert back to the original proposal. Please. So we'll vote on the original proposal of £1,000. Who seconded it? Oh, no, mm. Okay, so we'll vote on that. So those in favour have given the full amount that we've asked for. So those in favour? Those against? And abstentions? Can I just thank you for coming and uh, proposing your case for um, your funding um, and putting your uh, case very um, succinctly and to the point and justifying it as well. <laughs> I can only apologise um, for my, as a, as a councillor, uh, as my opinion, on behalf of anybody else. Uh, to the way that uh, Councillor Whitton spoke to you, it was quite unnecessary. He even voiced his own personal opinion as regards what the council thinks. And so I'd like to... Uh, point of order. I object. Yeah. That is out of order. You, you voiced your opinion on behalf of the council, not a, uh, not as your personal opinion. And I feel it's... Uh, how do you know that? Because you said so. And you I, said I voiced my opinion as a councillor, and I'm not no. arguing about it here. What you're saying is out of order, should be stopped, if you want to take it up at a later time, please do so. Right. So that's enough that for now. Okay? But thank you all, like Councillor, thanks for all coming and putting your thoughts forward. Yeah? Okay? Thank you. Okay, so item number 15, um, to note the minute, the planning meeting.
they does stipulate in their figure that um, to authorise the town clerk. In normal circumstances, financial rates 4.1, it says 2,000, and for 4.5, the emergency extraordinary circumstances is 10,000. I have talked to the clerk, he says that is perfectly adequate. So I would propose that we adopt those figures as the figures that the clerk is authorised to go up to for those two votes. Well, they currently set at the moment. Sorry? They are set at those figures already. They're, they're, set, they're set in financial regulation. If we can change them, we've got to then re-adopt financial rates. And because they're adequate for uh, our staff, I'm just proposing that we confirm that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Anyone got time? I'll second. I'll second. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We've got... I'm um, proposing... Norman second. Yeah. Um, those in yeah. favour? Those in favour? Uh, I want to ask oh, a question. Oh, yeah. So, this is amounts that the clerk can spend without recourse to any councillors or councillors? The 2000 is he can spend anything up to 2000 The 10000 he can spend in consultation with the chairman. I, I, I would add that I would not be spending £2,000 <laughs> without some sort of conversation. So these are in emergency situations? Yes. They're, they're yes. in the financial rates. They're in the financial rates, yeah. Just yeah. Before yeah. Happening more than I would have a discussion with the uh, chair or vice chair if there was uh, a ma matter there that I was you know, in any doubt about. Mm -hmm. So there was no doubt about that. What sort of scenario would you anticipate? For the well, for instance, I mean, if we had, like, they accident outside your place, where we had to have um, some contract to come in to um, do some work, mm -hmm. you know that sort of thing. Yeah. But, so yeah, but gen generally, yeah. but generally, you know, like safety yeah. safety side of things as well. Yeah. Um, you know we wouldn't worry about. But any sort of material purchases or anything like that, I would run it past. Yeah. No, no, that's that's fine by me. Okay. So we'll move to vote. Those in favour of that one. Okay, so June, June, are you voting on this? Or? Yes, sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, item number 17 to approve Brown and Remembrance Plan and Field Grant requested for 50% of that allocation. Okay. Can I make a point? Yeah, who wants to go first? Uh, well, we've got two representatives uh, from the town council who are on the Remembrance Plan Field uh, Committee. They went along to the AGM, same as I did, so perhaps they could make a case for the payment. Can I, before they do, can I suggest that we defer the matter? We've asked to speak with the some tr uh, trustees because there are questions that need answering, and there hasn't been a meeting arranged yet, has there? No. I have asked for I think we need to speak to the trustees before we. Agree money. They have asked a meeting, haven't they? Before we, before we had this. Um, well, uh, well, didn't we have them down there? Sorry? Didn't we have them all down there? Yes. But no, they not come back again. What are the questions? So they, they, subsequent to that, they were sent a letter with some questions which they have not answered. But they have, they have, um, said about a meeting, and we certainly think that that is the best way forward. So I think that should be deferred until we've had a meeting and we've got everything clear. You, what are you proposing then exactly? That the four public trustees have a meeting with... With us, all of them, I believe. Really interested council. Or any interested council. 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 I think it needs to be, because there is a few questions, a few councillors. Uh, that have been passed around, I think, needs to be answered. Okay. As we say, it's a lot of money. I don't think it was going to be a lot of money. Chair, sorry? Yes. Uh, it throws the years around 30, I think, isn't it? 30,000. Yeah. 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 Y
So when we're comparing to be fair, but are we only what we talk in one meeting? And then hopefully yeah, we'll get one meeting, you get it all sorted, and I propose. I'll second you. Okay. I'd like to just comment. Okay, comment, Councillor. I'd like to just comment. Comment away. We uh I mean, there's a resolution passed years and years ago that we pay the Met Grant on an annual basis. Um, I went to the AGM, I looked at their accounts, they were fine. The two representatives looked at their accounts, they were fine. Um, I propose we pay it. And when's the second day? Because this is the first installment, right? Yes. I propose we pay it because we're going to have a cash flow problem. Um, Not if you've read their accounts, are not? Sorry? If you've read their accounts, they're not going to have a cash flow This money was promised to them. We've, We've given, we've given it to them every year yeah. since so I, I, I propose we pay them and, and then have a meeting with them. Their accounts look fine. I'll second it. I'll make my comment there. Okay. 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 I'll make my proposal. Have we already got a proposal on the table? Can't you have more than one proposal? No. Then I'll make my comment. Then I'll make my comment. Well, it's already been passed that we paid them this money yeah. for the money this year. So we're going to make a point of order. It has not been. We presected the money for it. We didn't agree to spend it. We each each installment we 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 approve individually. That's that's the first point of order. The second <coughs> one is there's been there's been a proposal and there's been a seconder, and that's what we vote on. You can't have two or three proposals all at the same time. But why can't you? Because, because you can't. Three standing orders. Really? So what? You can't then have another idea? It's just one idea vote on. When yes, you've got a proposer and a seconder. So that's what I mean, you've been my proposal for you and you're not getting the chance to And say you don't more. interrupt, do you? Exactly like interrupting. It's not long. Nice. It's exactly the same. Um, you have, look, can I explain? You have a proposer for a, for a, and a seconder. You therefore have a proposal to debate and you vote on it. You don't have three running all at once. You cannot do that. Read your standing orders. I'll, I'll read it. I'll have a look. Okay, well, let Councillor Palmer and Mr. Sutton. Can we just have them clarity, please, so everybody knows what they're voting for? I propose that payment is deferred until after the meeting with the trustees. And I second it. Councillor Palmer? Can we just be told? where the stumbling block is on this because we usually weigh this what, what issues before we defer this mr chairman what issues are outstanding with a brand and remembrance plan for it? is it is it funds is it administration what is the problem with that because um, okay. i haven't finished because when i go down there over the weekend i see two or three hundred children thoroughly enjoying themselves down there if I think we're going to jeopardise that, I wouldn't be very happy about that. That is an institution, right, which we should be proud of down there. And to think we're going to defer payment for them, they've 30,000 pounds we give them. One of their men, they've got one man down there, he's probably, and I, I'm only guessing, and I stand to be corrected, he's probably only worth between 12 and 15,000 pounds per annum, just one person. So we don't we're, not, we're not given, what, what, Chairman, what are the reasons for us to defer, because we have never, ever deferred payment. Well, can I answer yeah, it? you can answer it. You don't have to answer that very question. You started it. Um, I, some information has come to light. An amendment to the governing document. Lack of information about the original governing document. And there are several questions that arise in one's mind that I wouldn't want to say in public, because we need a meeting to prove whether those suspicions are right or wrong. It's, it's a listening meeting. But I, I don't want to say, well, I suspect this or I suspect that, because I haven't got the proof. Nobody's got the proof, and it's not only me. No. But the fact is, if we have a meeting, we can ask the questions informally, in private, with any councillor who wants to be there, but not minuted, just an informative meeting. If they can satisfy one's misgivings, that'll be absolutely fine. If we defer it for one month, that's not going to bankrupt them. They've got 50 something. One, 51. 50, how many? 51. 51,000 in health bank, so it's not going to bankrupt them to wait a month. I don't like this word suspicions. 
Can you have some clarity on that, please? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I suspect that we, we have, for instance, been electing two members from this council on, onto the bank. Well, yes. Yeah. One. Sir? One. But it is, it is only one. I, I need to look at two. I assume that those people elected to there would be trustees. Because the governing document says that all of the management committee are trustees with the fiduciary duties that go with that. These are the questions, they are not answers. If they can put, put, put these things to bed, that's fine. But they're not, I mean, that, that financial statement didn't tell us very much, did it? Well, I can answer that. There are four public trustees. Mm. The rest are representatives of different organisations. Right. That's just really easy myself. That's not right. But reading, yeah. reading the constitutional governing document, that is not what it says. This isn't what it says. It says all committee members are trustees. But just they're, they're, that is just one example. All we want is to talk to the trustees and get clarity because it's public money <coughs> and I think we are owed an explanation and you know they might be able to immediately put our mind to rest and there's no problem. But I think we've got to ask the questions. Who wants to go first? You can choose between you. Now, am I right in understanding what was said earlier that the meeting has been requested by us? Yes. And yes. by both parties, I think. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. by both parties, yeah. and it hasn't happened yet. No, no. Well, perhaps a deferment for one month will galvanise both sides yeah. into yeah. ensuring yeah. that a meeting takes yeah. place yeah. ASAP. I don't think anybody around the stage is saying we don't have to give them it's just we want clarity on a couple of points before we do. Yes, thank you. I don't know whether you'll be able to clear this up in a month, but it's a bit complex. I think you should pay them, no. and then when it's... Let me finish, Bob. Let me finish, before you come in. Manners. Pay it, we should pay it, and then when the second payment comes along, probably in November, you would dangle that carrot. You can say, right, we're not going to pay until all this business about the trustees, the administration, the sort of because um, that's £15,000, you can hold back the other £15,000, but to all of a sudden decide they're not going to pay, and you probably haven't given them enough notes, that's the thing. Mm. If you'd have talked about this many months ago, but you haven't, I think you've sort of just, it's just been dropped on them. No, it's Have a little bit of compassion. Thank you, Mr Chair. Well, I believe I wrote broken a letter asking them questions back when? February. February. No reply. And now we've asked for a meeting. Is that unreasonable? Hey, Councillor Palmer, will you go? Uh, so I'm going to go back and tell them that Andrew Louise has as well. Right, that you're not giving them no money at all until you've had a meeting with them here. Is that right? Well, perhaps not. Okay, is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're talking about? It's deferred. It's not, not going to give them more money. We are deferring payment until we've had a meeting to clarify things. And it, from, from then, we haven't been giving the money till June, July last year, so mm. we forgot to put yeah. it on. So I don't think it's going to affect it that much. Oh, sorry, um, mm. They did ask for a meeting um, before, but we had, I think the, they had a general meeting, and then obviously we had the town meeting as well, so it'd be the next. Yeah, I mean, next one. Yes, David, I'll set you up. Okay. Um, I think Councillor Rizal was first. Or you've been oh, I was off at the end of the day. Just out of curiosity, so if we've been paying this already for God knows how many years, how come it's only just been brought to light this technicality? It's not one. It's not one technicality. So. The council prior before has neglected their duties to yes. oversee. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's not good. Does that That's not good enough. In you know, I don't. You know, I'm sure all the answers will be quite easily given, and they'll clear it out fairly quickly. You know. Yeah. 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 Okay. So are we going to move to vote for this, or what? Well, the council did for. I think he wants to comment. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit confused on this. They're asking for their half payment. 
we normally give them the half payment in May. Mm -hmm. It seems to be the council wants to defer payment until you've had a meeting with these trustees who were here a couple of months ago, but nobody raised anything, whatever the problem is, with them then. If you have this meeting, which you're expecting yes. to have in the next couple of weeks, and it's not satisfactory answers to your questions, are you then not going to pay them in June the half amount? Because that's what it sounds to be. And most of this money that we give the you remembrance playing fields is basically the salary of Mr Griffiths, the wear and tear on the lawnmower equipment, and the fuel to mow the 35 acres of the remembrance playing fields. So I'm a little bit concerned about that you want a meeting, but if you don't get satisfactory answers, you're not going to pay. So really, I'm in with Victor that you pay the half amount that you vote for this tonight. Can I, can I just add that if things, supposing things aren't quite as we think they should be, <coughs> By giving that money, you are all responsible for that money. Yeah. yeah. You sound, you're saying as though there's something untoward here. You know, no, something's no, a bit no. illegal. There are there are queries there that need answering. Yes. If you don't get, if if those answers, um, explain it. If there's something wrong or that doesn't meet our auditing, they're going to come knocking on your door for a number of thousands of pounds. Because you voted to give someone money incorrectly. We are not really confused. I think what, what Graham is trying to say is you're culpably responsible for that, for all of our uh, money and how it's used and etc etc. So if you give them thirty thousand pounds and they all disappear off on holiday to the Bahamas, <coughs> they're gonna someone's gonna pick that up in our next audit and come run knocking on your door. I think this question probably should have been asked years ago. That yeah, obviously that's the problem it's never been and, and it's probably a hard decision for us to make because obviously we don't want to make that decision in we don't want to do that because it's not it's not going to be favourable for everybody in reality but We've got to ask them questions because we're the, in theory, we're the keeper of that public money and we're the ones giving back to them. So we've got to ask this question. I don't think anybody's saying there's any wrong there, and I, I shan't imagine there is. I don't think anybody down there would be in that way. I don't think there would be any wrong there at all. But we've got to ask the questions. If there's questions that we're answering, they need to be answered. Yeah, uh, Let me too fast here. This is a registered charity. Yeah. yeah. Nobody is going to. Disappear off to the Bahamas with their money. I assure you of that. Because what everybody has to vote on any money that's paid. That's not going to happen. Uh, I don't like that remark. Mm -hmm. I think this is getting ridiculous. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let, let's decide what we're going to do and do it, please. Okay, well, I'll give you more a decision on this. Just one final no. comment, if I may. Yeah. If there's no anomalies, obviously the payment will be made. Yes. Yes. If there are anomalies, surely they can be rapidly addressed by both sides. That's very easily done. And the payment made. We're not saying don't make the payment. No, no, no. no we, in theory, we want to give them the money. That's the reality. But mm. we can't until we get these questions answered. And they don't normally get it this early. Quite often it's no, June, June, July, yeah. That's we forgot to give it to And they, they're not going to be bankrupt by this delay. Yeah. It's not a lot then, it's a delay. Hmm. Well, what concerns me is some of the standards table not privy to these anomalies. You know, we're asked to vote on I don't think there seems to be whispers, which is... I don't well, think it's fair to raise it without no, the no. trustees there to answer. Yeah. What's getting me? So, which councillor found it? Or the clerk? Who found it? Why wasn't any other councillors informed? Last I looked, we all sit at the table together, and now you bring it to the table and say it wants to be deferred, but 
there's a lot, like Victor just said, whispers behind the scenes. Why weren't other councillors informed of your, 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 your assumptions of what could be a serious crime? Because that's, 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 that's what it sounds like. Someone's saying running to the Bahamas with money. Yeah, but inform now is not good when certain members of the same council have already made their decision on well, something that seems so subjective. And you won't is that, is that, is is that expanding all this? Are we allowed to agree with that? Is that the same? Are we allowed to take, you know, because that's what it seems to me. Who, who do you want to do your research for? You don't do my research, do you? No, I don't, but if we sit at the same table, are you a team? You let people know. If it's something so severe, especially with the amount of money that they're requesting, you, I would have lied before. You would have said, hey, Clark, can you send that letter to my, 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 count, my fellow councillors and say that this is what's been brought to my attention, this is what we propose? But we don't. I don't. I sit here in the dark sometimes. You sit there and then quote me on my standing orders as well. Yet, quite frankly, a lot of other people here are hypocrites. So what I'm saying is, if it's severe, we should all be, we should be working together. Uh, you can yes. just object to the word hypocrite. Exactly. Yeah. We did our training. Have you done your training? I did do the training, yes. Right, did you read yeah. it like this? Yes, I did. Right, so we've got it in this. There, there, and then we're going to move to a vote because we can't keep going around the table. It appears, or well, what it seems is, that Graham wrote a letter a few months back asking for some answers for certain questions yes, so they were not they were not replied to so therefore it appears what the council wants is to for them to reply to these letters and or reply to these questions and then this bit about uh, deferring can be sorted out we're not saying that they're not going to get paid but the only, it appears the only way you're going to get the answers to the question is to defer it, and perhaps they will give you the answers to the question you want. Right. Thank you. Can we vote? Can we vote? And that and was what the Brandon you know, Members Bill has asked for another meeting to discuss these things. Yes. So it's there. Why are we so. arguing? Can we just take a vote and then move on? Yes. Well, this is the last one. Can I just ask, why isn't this in confidential? Then we might be told what the misdemeanor is. We don't know. We haven't replied. No, it's only my stuff. It's not fair without the trustees being present. I don't think that we should pass a judgment without them being present and being able to answer. The thing is to arrange this bloody meeting ASAP. And get the map cleared out as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we'll move to a vote. Councillor Van proposed we defer to the vote. Yeah, the round, yeah. Okay, so those in favour of deferral. To defer. Can we have an own vote, which is. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think it's quite an important issue. Yep, yeah. so um, you want to go around and do the vote? I think it's quite, because you know, this, this could be. Uh, this could be a, 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 a rocky road, I'm not sure of that. <coughs> Okay, so mm -hmm. those in favour, when we've got hands up for favour, we hold our hands up to the ground and take our things, okay? Yeah. Okay, so those in favour of the deferral, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Anybody else? Everyone? Hang on. Okay, those against the deferral. And have we got any extensions from that one? So we've got some white one as an extension. Okay. We move on to item number 18. We refuse the delegation arrangements to committees, subcommittees, staff, and other local authorities. You want to explain that one around? Yeah, let me just get my mm -hmm. paper. This is basically the uh, yeah, here we go. Right. From last year this is. This was to um, 
what happened last year. The clerking form the council that this item was included within the agenda of the state and our standing orders. He and uh, did not believe this was relevant to the meeting at the time. The chair accepted this point and no council had any objection. The meeting was moved on to the next agenda item, which is basically south now from West Suffolk, uh, which I tend to deal with. So, so we're happy to move on to the next item then? Yeah. That's what we did last year. Yeah. Okay, so item number 19 is to re review the terms of reference for committees. So we've got them in our pack, I believe. We've definitely got the, we've got the New York Cemetery Working Party, what I've got. Is there any other one in there? We've got planning. Excuse me, Chair. If you don't object, I'm going to extract myself from the meeting. Up to you. No, I have a sick daughter at home, so. I think that's good. Yeah, feel free, off you go. Hope she gets better. Thank you. So, I'll propose you to retain the um, terms of reference as they are. Have you got a second for that? Yeah. Okay. Are we happy to move? We happy to move to a vote on that one. So, those in favour of who's second? Um, those in favour of keeping the terms of reference as they are. Is everybody vote? Okay. Number nineteen. The point. Councillors to community groups for the year 2022-2023. So we've got the community groups of Framingham and Rivers playing fields and South. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah? So we need representatives. Are we... Who have we got now? Uh, well, I know we've got Louise for Framingham and Rivers playing field. Who was South last year? Me and David. Me and David. Are you quite happy to stick with what we've got? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we are quite happy to represent on the south. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll propose to keep it the same. Hang yeah. on. Those two. Remember, it's playing fields. It'll be Dave. Yeah. Just Louise. David Palmer. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 And David Palmer is on the south. Yeah. So I'll propose. Second so look for that. Yeah. Yeah. So we we'll move to vote to keep it the same with those two. Yeah. Those in favour. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Item number one: to appoint members for Brown Town Council committees and working parties 2022 to 2023. So we've got the East Ward Lighting Working Party, the West Ward Lighting Working Party, the Planning Panel, Cemetery Committee, <coughs> General Full Council, um, the yeah, and then we've got the Emergency Panel. We've got the New Cemetery Working Party, and we've got the Christmas and Events Working Party. I suggested keeping the same. Works well. Unless something wants to change or, or come off, yes. Come off or go on. You need an inclusion. There's no centre, but need to put central ward for the lighting as well as three wards for lighting. You're absolutely right, there is. Yes, yeah, we do. There is a, we are missing There is a central ward. We have yeah, it on our top sheet there, right? So, oh, we, right, so, so we would include the central ward on that. And Councillor Everton's proposals will keep everybody exactly as it is. Assuming everybody's happy to stay on what they were on. Could you, Jim, could you please just remind uh, remind me who is on the lighting working parties? Is that possible, Graham? Yeah, I've got a list here, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, right. Um, right. Um, East Ward, you've got uh, Louise and uh, yeah. um, Central Ward, you've got uh, Jane by Blackwell. Yeah. yeah. And West Ward, you've got June Hughes. Yeah, that's right. That's that was what we voted on last year, remember? Because yeah. with the lighting, I'm, I don't bring it up when we have a meeting unless there is one that's found and then we report it. Yeah, that's the main thing, it's just a report. Yeah, we don't know. It's a major problem, but I mean, most people tend to report it, you know, yeah. directly or send it directly. I mean, we keep getting them come through. Could we just ask Julie whether she would like to still stick with the lighting on the... <coughs> June, would you like to still stick with the lighting committee that you were on last year? Before we vote? What committee was I on last you're year? On the, you're, on the, you're on the West... West oh, I've got that right, I think it's West Ward, isn't it? West Ward, yeah. yes. West, West Ward. Yes, yes. yes. okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Chair, I'm asked what the emergency panel is. Do we have a normal 
we're not it's a it's a procedure uh, it's a it's a sheet of paper with contact numbers that in an emergency we know within brand who you have to contact notify you. contact for help or what have you. It was decided previously that you know it was didn't wasn't needed, but it was the fire that Councillor Lucanic mentioned that made me think we should have this right. facility because if anything really serious happened, we need a plan of action because otherwise the town yeah, council would be failing. We've had two fires down down our road. Well, then we get there's a lot of them, so we have to yeah. So it's definitely something to. It's yeah. it's nothing. It doesn't need. Just need. All it needs is uh, somebody to take on the updating of it. That's all at the moment. Yeah. And then notify everybody what it is. Okay. So we're voting on everything, yeah. 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 Well, have we got a name for the emergency? Uh, a, a, a oh, if it's a new thing, we're going to have to add that person on. Yeah. Who would like to take on the emergency panel? Well. I think you're the ideal candidate, Chair. Well, I will have a look at it. Yes, Mr. Graham. Yes, there you go. Normally, it's up with me at some point. Isn't it? So, <laughs> the the bike stops at me, doesn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. Right. If we have enough video, I'll put me down. Right? You will work through that, Graham. I'll sort that out. Yeah. Okay. I've got a copy of it, but it's just. So, so the, we've got a pro for a second, didn't we, for that? Who seconded? That I, did, I, think, I think, yeah, one of them. So I'm supposed to keep everything exactly as it is at the emergency panel, as, as we've just said. Yeah. So those in favour of that? Okay. Item number 22. Any appointment of new committees? We've pretty much covered that, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything on the station committee yet? No, I think well, it's not actually... And there's something I want to talk to you about at last, but not. And we've got nothing from Norfolk side. No. That, we went from there. Mm -hmm. And nothing from there. <coughs> no, it, it's. I pinged off another email and I've not heard a thing. Mm. Okay, so any new appointment, any new committee you need to appoint? We'll move on. Right, okay. Yeah. On number 23, to review and adopt of a new code of conduct. So we've got the code of conduct in here, and we might come in and three. It's the new code of conduct. Oh, sure. There's quite a lot of it. So I suppose we adopt it. I'll second. Okay, we'll vote for that then. We're all in favour. Those in favour? I want to say something. Yeah, okay, could we say something? Anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I personally think we should have a training day with somebody that knows about the code of conduct so everybody can be put in the picture. Because they're so ambiguous that document, they can't be enforced, and I think we ought to have some proper training. Is that possible to get the training? I would have thought so. So that's what we're going to have a look at that ground for us. Yeah. Okay. Hang on, we just did. Can we vote on that? Can I just say, quite frankly. To some extent, it's a waste of time anyway, because we're stuck at counting forces anyway, but I'm not sure why we have a code of conduct. You know, the Nolan principles are there, which everybody quite simply can understand. That is a whole load, and it is a lot to read. And what's a training going to do? Because it wastes more money, and I don't think it'll achieve anything. Well, we'll give it to the option of anybody that wants to attend. <laughs> Okay, so those in favour of um, adopting that for the vote, well, that's where I missed the vote, so we've got to vote again for that. Okay? Yeah. Okay, I'll be getting rid of that. Yeah. Okay, I'm number 24 to review, review and adopt the motion of the approach standing orders, basically amended on the 3rd of March 2018 and the financial regulations updated in July 2019. I'll propose we adopt all of those. Okay, we have the vote. Those in favour of all that? Looks like we've all got that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I read um, for, right, number right. 25. Review of representation on or work with external bodies <laughs> and arrangements for all reporting back. I think that's something really sad, isn't it, from memory? Yeah, I mean, it's just basically, um, you know, when, when we forget to a meeting that uh, there is uh, 
some sort of report done and brought back to council. So, so you report, if you go for a meeting of town, you will report yeah. back. So Absolutely. we just vote to say that's right. Do we need to vote on that, Jimmy? Do we need to vote for it? Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay, we'll vote and we wait just to keep it right. So, yeah, those in favour of that's right. Victor, do you want to vote? Yeah, I'll vote. Yeah, so we'll vote. Yeah, 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 Right, item number 26. The review of inventory of land and assets. That's how you go on that Yeah, um, what I've done, I've taken last year's and um, added in the uh, <coughs> items that we need to add in for this year. Have got a copy? No, we haven't got a copy of it. No, no, I can sort of like that. I think we should defer that because it would become approved without a copy of it. Yeah, I've got it here. Yeah, basically it's increased by 9,200. Yeah, we had that around the back, we've got enough copies. Is I haven't got enough copies now, so I can circulate it. Is that an inflationary increase or is that an increase? No, no, there's the items that we bought. I mean, for instance, so you've got equipment. Yeah, you've yeah. got um, Christmas tree, um, the lighting, um, the, um, sort of the timber heart. I'd have thought that would more than 9,000 because the tree was 10 grand. Um, might be wide enough. So Could we leave that until we've all had a copy? Should we defer that yeah. and send it out? Oh, yeah. that I would so we will vote, I'll propose to defer, second for the deferring. I vote to defer that to the next meeting. All in favour of that. There we go. Okay, item number 27. <clears throat> Confirmation of arrangements for insurance cards. Right. Concept insurance documents that are in place at this moment in time with um, Hallam, changed their name. So, we need to vote on it because it's just in place. Just it's just confirmation it's there. Just information. Yeah. We know it's there. They're all there. Okay, so item number 28 review of the council's and or staff descriptions to any other bodies. So, that is probably to now South and. Well, yeah, well, no, we don't do now, but it's South. Councillor Whittam asked about this one. Um, the SALT um, one is £1,237, and the other one we subscribe to is the Federation of Bur Burial and Cremation Authorities, which is £185 a year. So, they're the two that we subscribe to. Yeah. So, we vote to agree to that, yeah? We've got to have both of those, really. So, yeah, proposed second. So, you're proposing or seconding? Yeah, Victor's proposing. Normal second. I'm assuming this is an annual thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, if those in favour of one of those, you know. Okay, I'm going to go down. What am I going to go Review of the council's complaint procedure. Yeah. We've got that on here. I'm happy with it, so I'll propose it. Yeah. 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 Those in favour of it. Yeah. You vote. Yeah, you vote. You vote. You vote. Yeah. Item number thirty. Mm -hmm. Review of the council's procedure for handling requests made under the Freedom of Information Act, two thousand, and the Data Protection Act, nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. 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 We've got proposals for that. Seconder. Yeah. 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 And then we've got seconded down there from Jane. Right, we're all happy with the vote. So those in favour of that. Yeah? Yeah. You vote yeah. 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 yeah, you did vote. That's everybody's man. Yeah. Okay, I'm number 31, review of the campus policy for dealing with the press slash media. Mm. We have the communications policy. Well. Item 31. It's not it's, called it's, it's called it's called communication. It's called communication. I'm confused. Yeah. I'll propose it, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Second is right. Jane. Yeah. So those in favour of keeping that as it is. Oh, Looks like it's all. Okay, um where are we now? Oh, you oh, you oh, oh, that's it. To determine the time and place of the ordinary meeting for the full council up until the end of the annual meeting at next year, really. Yeah. Okay. I mean, these are obviously subject to any um, changes. Well, generally we would be up the road, but at the moment we're keeping the distance now. So I think we'll keep it, should be set up the road until, unless it's changed, we know it's given each month. Which oh, right. Yeah, I'll still have. 
So we can change to the old school. Well, at the moment, what have we got down there? Well, we've got both. We've got the options. So we'll keep it both then. I think we're going to keep it as that because we don't know what's going to change throughout the year. So, yeah, I mean, that brings to a question that we're going to go next time. Yeah, we'll sort that out in a little while. Okay. Yeah, so at the moment we've got their church institute or old school house, depending on the feeling at the meeting before what anybody thinks. Um, obviously, the cemetery, um, the, main, the cemetery meeting in August is going to be held in the cemetery. Um, and the dates and times are all there. Is everybody happy with it? Yeah. Okay, I'll propose it Second. Second. Those in favour of it? Yeah. yeah. Um, item number 33, to confirm the lead person for safeguarding. Who have we got on that now? Jim. Jim. Do you want to stay as a safeguarding lead person, Jim? You did it last year. Yes, I might. Yeah, you all right with that job, yeah? Well, I'll propose we keep you then. I'll second it. Okay, everybody happy with both? That? Those are afraid of keeping you in a safeguarding person in the water. Yeah? Perfect. Yeah. Do we make around here? Yeah. Uh, right, I'm on first to call through resolution to exclude the press and the, the public anthem. Pursuant to the Public Lawyers Admissions Meeting Act 1960, the public and press be Excluded from the meeting temporarily due to the confidential nature of the business to be discussed concerning quotes and staff or contract. So I would propose 